It is my singular honor to now to introduce two persons who really don't need any introduction to an audience such as this one. So my task is short and immensely pleasurable. Firstly, President Cyril Ramaphosa. He has been a leader in, in, in every sphere in which he has been active, from the university campus to the trade union movement, from the liberation movement to the private sector, from political party to government. It feels good once more to have in the highest office in the land a person who has earned our respect. The high regard Nelson Mandela had for him as a leader and as a colleague is well known, and the two had a long association. President Ramaphosa, thank you for agreeing to offer a few words of reflection before we move to the much anticipated lecture by President Obama. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Bimela. Sanbonani. Molweni. Abshin. Bimasiari. Huyemeda. Thank you very much. Program Director, Chairperson of the Nelson Mandela Foundation, Professor Jabulon Debele, Mama Grasa Michelle, the Mandela and the Michelle families, President Barack Obama, King Zuelitini, the Elders Collective that was set up by Madiba, represented here by the former Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan. The former President of Ireland, Mary Robinson. Mr. Brahimi, former Foreign Affairs Minister of Algeria. Former President Khalema Motante, <laughs> Ministers of our Government, Premier of Gauteng, David Makura, <laughs> leaders of various political parties, I saw General Holomisa here, <laughs> and leaders of non governmental organizations faith-based organization leaders, 
Asop, Bishop Lekhanyane, the head of the Mutsipe Foundation, Mr. Patrice Mutsipe, the Chief Executive Officer of the Nelson Mandela Foundation, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a real pleasure to be here for me to present President Barack Obama, South Africans and indeed many other people around the world are truly humbled and privileged to be participating in this celebration of the centenary of Nelson Mandela, the father of our democracy, and Mama Albertina Sisulu throughout the whole year. I'm sure that many of us who are gathered here will join me in saying that attending this Nelson Mandela annual lecture in the year of Nelson Mandela centenary is indeed a huge and a very rare privilege. But more importantly, it is because President Obama agreed to come that many of us are here today. We'd like to thank the Nelson Mandela Foundation for having extended this invitation to all of us to participate in this historic moment. From the very first lecture, this Nelson Mandela annual lecture has been global in its ambition. It has also been broad and inclusive in its outreach and that is why there are so many of us here today, but many more of our people, South Africans, are watching this lecture live on television and listening on radio. So President Obama, there are millions and millions of South Africans who will be listening to your message today, and we are truly privileged to have this opportunity to listen to you. Those invited to deliver the lecture in the past have included prominent leaders, thinkers and activists from across the African continent and from across the world. The insights that they shared have reflected on what I would call the human condition and they have, as they delivered the lectures, touched on issues of poverty, inequality, health, unemployment, and have sought in their lectures to describe the tasks that we must together undertake to advance the well-being of, the global, of a global humanity. In this sense, the Nelson Mandela Annual Lecture is a fitting tribute to the life and the meaning of Nelson Kholitlatha Mandela, to the people of South Africa, the people of our beloved continent, and indeed, the people of the world at large. This occasion gives us an opportunity to reflect on Nelson Mandela's life, a man we are all proud to call the founding father of our united non-racial, non-sexist, and democratic South Africa. The people of South Africa bestowed the title of the father of the nation on Madiba because his struggles and his sacrifices touched the lives of millions and will continue to inspire the generations that will follow. We honor and revere him because he lived his life in the full service of his people. He led us from the wilderness of conflict and oppression into the land of promise, of freedom, democracy, and equality. His vision, his values, and his influence are universal. They cross borders, they span continents, and also reach across time. 
as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of his birth, as we reflect on an extraordinary life, we are bound to acknowledge that the greatest trait of this son of the African soil was really his humanity. He is hailed as a global icon. He is memorialized as in towering statues in many parts of the world. His likeness adorns our national currency, yet his most enduring accomplishment was to teach us what it means to be a human. As South Africans, we are proud to say that he was one of us, that he was born of us, and he was formed by us and was a product of us, his people. Yet we know that he belonged to the world. Nelson Kholikla Mandela appealed beyond the boundaries of race, color, class, gender, or nationality, beyond differences of faith, creed, or affiliation. As a leader of his organization, the African National Congress, he ensured that his ANC became the leader of society as a servant of the people. He shared with us many of the same frailties and doubts, the same weaknesses and fears. Like us, he was not perfect. That is why he constantly sought his better self. This makes his life and his contribution all the more remarkable. He demonstrated with greater effect than most the extent of a human's capacity for love, for compassion, and forgiveness, for wisdom, humility, and understanding. Madiba challenged us to reach beyond our grasp to achieve what we thought impossible. He taught us to strive, to struggle, to serve, and to do so selflessly. Now, as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of his birth, we are called upon not only to uphold his values and to emulate his humility and his selflessness, we are called upon by Madiba to be active in the struggle for a better South Africa, a better Africa, and a better world. Madiba's enduring legacy is that he expects us to fight for the interests of the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized. We are called upon by Madiba to prosecute a progressive struggle against inequality, racial discrimination, ethnic chauvinism, and patriarchy. We are called upon by Madiba to join hands with like-minded people around the world to resist the domination of global affairs by the rich and the powerful. He calls upon us to heal our nation and to change the world. In the year of renewal, as our nation is filled with renewed hope, with the future, I keep hearing Madiba's voice right into my ear, saying, I am sending you to serve the nation. So fellow South Africans, the Tumamina message was inspired by none other than Madiba. Madiba's spirit is here today. He is sending all of us to deal with all the challenges we face, inequality, and yes, Madiba being the Madiba that we knew and loved, he's also sending all of us 
to deal with corruption and root it out of South African soil. It is therefore fitting that in this year of Madiba Centenary, the Nelson Mandela Foundation has invited President Barack Obama to deliver the 16th Nelson Mandela Annual Lecture. Many people around the world dream of being like Madiba. I have laid in my bed many a times and dreamt of being like Madiba. <laughs> many never see their dreams fulfilled. But President Barack Obama somehow found a way to beat many of us in being like Madiba. Like Madiba, he is a Nobel Peace Laureate. That's point number one. Like Madiba, he was the first African-American president to lead his nation. Like Madiba, he is an inspiration to all those who are working and seeking to create a better world. And like, Mad like Madiba, he has an abiding love and commitment to empower young people. <laughs> Much as there are many similarities, there is one area where President Obama cannot match Madiba. <laughs> Unfortunately, he cannot dance as well as Madiba can dance. And in case you think, like a politician, I'm lying, <laughs> I checked this out with him, and he confessed that, yes, he can do a little bit of a shake, but Michelle Obama is a better dancer than him. <laughs> As South Africans, we celebrated President Obama's election as the 44th President of the United States, not merely because he was a son of this continent, but because he embodied many of the values and aspirations that defined our struggle for liberation. We recognize in him the qualities that we saw in great leaders like Nelson Mandela, humility, wisdom, compassion, as well as an extraordinary ability to inspire hope and to urge a nation to action. We saw a leader who had dedicated a remarkable political life to challenging prejudice and discrimination, to championing the cause of the poor, and disenfranchised people and to pursuing justice and equality. In him, we found an American president concerned as much about the fate of humanity as the future of his own countrymen and women, a leader who recognized the indivisibility of the global community and who desired, like us, to forge a common future. In him, President Barack Obama, we found an ally, we found a friend, we found a kindred spirit, and we found a brother. It therefore gives me great pleasure to invite President Barack Obama to deliver the 16th Nelson Mandela Annual Lecture. I thank you.